This is the tale of a 787 Dreamliner that tore open right after 32 seconds of takeoff in Ahmedabad, India. The plane was high-tech, modern, a marvel of materials and software, and yet it shattered on impact, killing 242 people on board. This isn't the kind of photo you're supposed to see from modern commercial aviation, especially not from Boeing, because this plane wasn't old, it wasn't outdated. It was one of Boeing's most advanced airliners, designed with cutting-edge materials, next-gen engines, the kind of aircraft that was supposed to represent the future of flight. But lately, these images have started to pile up. Fragments from the Java Sea, scorched earth outside Bishoftu, Ethiopia, pieces of wings, windows, engines, all from aircraft designed to be too advanced to crash. So what happened? This isn't just a story about faulty software or a single crash. This is about Boeing, about a company that helped build the very idea of modern air travel and how, somewhere along the way, it started making compromises, not just in engineering, but in identity. If it's Boeing, I ain't going. Safety is at the core of who we are at Boeing. For a long time, Boeing was aviation's gold standard. They built the 707, the jet that made long-haul travel possible. Then the 747, the queen of the skies, a double-decker that made global travel accessible and glamorous. Then came the 777, a twin-engine marvel that flew across oceans with ease, setting a new benchmark for range, reliability, and efficiency. For decades, the company had one simple rule. Engineers run the show. Planes weren't rushed. They weren't released until they were right. Safety wasn't a slogan. It was a way of life. Profit? That came later. Engineering came first. That was the culture. That was the pride. But in the early 2000s, things began to shift. Quietly, subtly, and then, unmistakably. To understand how we got here, to a world where Boeing jets might be missing bolts or running untested software mid-flight, you have to start with a rivalry. In 2010, Airbus made its move. They announced the A320neo, a quieter, more efficient version of their workhorse narrowbody. It burned less fuel, made less noise, and most importantly for airlines, it didn't require new pilot training. That last part was genius. It meant airlines could upgrade their fleets without spending millions on simulators or pilot recertification. From a business standpoint, it was a home run. Boeing had to respond, but fast. Their competing jet, the 737, was already decades old, a workhorse from the 1960s, stretched and tweaked over generations. Building a brand new plane would take years, maybe a decade. And Boeing didn't have that kind of time, or patience, or frankly, budget. So they did the only thing they could, upgrade the existing 737 again. This time, they added new high-bypass engines, the same style Airbus had used. But there was a problem. The 737 sat lower to the ground, too low, in fact, to fit the bigger engines underneath. So they mounted them farther forward and higher up on the wing. Technically, it worked, but aerodynamically, it changed the plane's behavior. At full thrust, especially during takeoff, the nose wanted to pitch upward too much, too fast. That risked a stall. So Boeing added software. They called it MCAS, MCAS, the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System. In plain English, it was a system that quietly stepped in if the plane's nose rose too high, automatically pushing it back down. From Boeing's perspective, this was elegant. Engineers could smooth out the plane's quirks, and the company could claim the MAX flew just like older 737s, avoiding expensive simulator training for pilots. But here's the catch. Pilots weren't clearly told MCAS existed. It wasn't in the flight manual. It wasn't part of training scenarios. Some crews learned to fly the MAX on nothing more than a two-hour iPad course. They didn't even know what to look for if something went wrong. And then, disaster. October 2018, Lion Air Flight 610 crashes into the Java Sea just minutes after takeoff. Faulty sensor data triggered MCAS. The nose pitched down. The pilots pulled up. MCAS pushed again. Over and over. They lost the fight. Five months later, it happened again. Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302. Same jet. Same glitch. Same struggle for control. And this time, even after disabling MCAS, the pilots couldn't recover. 157 people dead. That's when the world took notice. 
The entire 737 MAX fleet was grounded. But the deeper issue? It wasn't just MCAS. It was Boeing's culture. Back in 1997, Boeing merged with McDonnell Douglas, a once legendary company that had hit hard times. But the merger brought in a new mindset, one that prioritized quarterly earnings over aerodynamics. Suddenly, Boeing was less about pilots and prototypes, and more about presentations and profit margins. They moved their headquarters to Chicago, away from the engineers, away from the factory floor, away from the noise, the tools, the hangars, the very soul of aircraft building. Bit by bit, decisions began tilting toward cost cutting, outsourcing increased, deadlines got tighter, quality checks got, let's say, flexible. Even the FAA, once fiercely independent, started leaning on Boeing's own employees to help sign off on safety. That's how MCAS got through. Not with some villainous intent, but through pressure, corner cutting, a kind of corporate tunnel vision. And then those internal emails came out. This airplane is designed by clowns, who in turn are supervised by monkeys. I wouldn't put my family on a max. Those were Boeing employees, not whistleblowers, just regular people sounding the alarm in real time. And still, executives stayed the course. No simulator training no disclosures. The reasoning was always the same. Keep up with Airbus. Hit delivery deadlines. Don't lose orders. But the cracks weren't just in the MAX. The 787 Dreamliner was supposed to be Boeing's bold step forward. Carbon composite fuselage. Fuel efficiency. A quieter ride. Instead, it suffered production delays, battery fires, and persistent quality issues. Boeing even had to halt deliveries for over a year due to structural defects tiny gaps between fuselage sections, improper shimming, flawed inspections, things that don't belong on a next-gen jetliner. Then came the 777X, their next-generation widebody, already four years behind schedule. And the KC-46 tanker, built for the US military, billions over budget, plagued with technical problems. These aren't just unlucky streaks. They're signs of something deeper, a company trying to balance engineering ambition with corporate demands and not always succeeding. Today, Boeing is trying to course correct. The 737 MAX is flying again. MCAS has been reworked. Pilots now get proper training. Leadership has changed. The rhetoric is more cautious, more humble. But the trust? That's a harder fix. Because in early 2024, it happened again. An Alaska Airlines 737 MAX 9 lost a door panel mid-air, just tore off, the cabin depressurized, oxygen masks dropped, and panic filled the fuselage. The FAA grounded more jets, passengers swore off the MAX, and inside Boeing, more whistleblowers came forward. Some of them didn't live to testify. John Barnett, a quality manager with 30 years at Boeing, raised concerns about safety lapses at the 787 plant. He later died under mysterious circumstances, officially ruled a suicide, but many aren't convinced. Other whistleblowers, like Sam Salapur, publicly alleged serious defects with the 787's fuselage joins, saying he was silenced and retaliated against. Boeing denied the claims. The FAA is investigating. Layoffs have swept through Boeing's workforce. Thousands of experienced engineers and mechanics were let go, some voluntarily, others not. Many say the company lost institutional memory, the kind of know-how you can't replace with spreadsheets. Meanwhile, shareholders were kept happy. Boeing spent tens of billions on stock buybacks and executive bonuses in the 2010s. Even after the MAX disasters, board members collected millions. Safety took a backseat to shareholder value. And the irony, in trying to impress Wall Street, Boeing lost its grip on the very game it was trying to win. Orders dropped, deliveries stalled, confidence eroded. It's hard not to wonder, how many warning signs does it take before a company truly listens? Meanwhile, Airbus surged ahead, outselling and out-delivering Boeing by more than double. In 2024 alone, Boeing posted an $11.8 billion loss, its worst in decades, while Airbus pulled in billions in profit. Boeing, a company once synonymous with aviation excellence, now just trying to catch up. Of course it's sad, but the thing about aviation is, it runs on invisible contracts. When we step onto a plane, we don't check the rivets. We don't quiz the mechanics. We trust. We trust that every bolt is tightened, every system is tested, that the people behind this machine were thinking about our safety, not just shareholder reports. And when that trust breaks, it doesn't come back easily. There's something heartbreaking about Boeing's story, not because they messed up, everyone makes mistakes, but because they knew better. 
They were better. They had the talent, the resources, the legacy. They helped define air travel for the modern world. And yet, they started chasing speed over safety, image over integrity. They built jets to win contracts, not confidence. And while the planes may fly again with better software and stricter checks, there's a lingering question Boeing can't shake. Who's really watching the skies? And if it happens again, will we be surprised?